All right, back inside the Pirate Radio Zoom Room, joined today by Hunter Allen of uh, the Zoom Room, brought to you by the Auto Store Group. You can shop online, theautostoregroup.com. Also, Sailor Warehouse, call Toby Williams and his team at 252-799-7051. White Claw Hard Seltzer is a sponsor as well, proudly distributed by Coastal Beverage Company and your CBD store. You can find them on Arlington Boulevard. Next to Dunk Duck Donuts. Hunter, uh, welcome to the Zoom room, man. How you been? Clip, doing good. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Everything's yes, good. Yes, sir. Good to see you. And uh, Hunter, now a coach at UNC Greensboro. And uh, and first question, uh, Hunter, how's uh, Coach Billy Godwin doing? I know he had uh, a health issue during the season. How's he doing today? Yeah, he's doing uh, doing much better. So um, back rolling, back you know, back to normal and. He's uh he's awesome, doing good. So it's good news. A little scary situation, but he's he's doing much better. Hunter able to uh, play for a couple of Godwins here at East Carolina. And Hunter, we like to throw labels on you players, and and coach on the field is one of those labels. But I don't know if anybody epitomized that more than you. You got coaching in the blood. You're a coach now. You were a captain uh, here at East Carolina. You were a shortstop. Did you did you feel that way? towards the end of your career at ECU that you were a coach out there on the field? I mean, I, I was fortunate to play with some guys that, you know, a lot of good players and and not necessarily a coach on the field, but just more so of, you know, especially being older with the, the younger group that we had, kind of more of just a, a voice for them to come to if they needed to. But really, I mean, because we were so young my junior year going in, I had a bunch of younger guys playing when it led to my senior year, uh, with the guys, we had the younger guys mixed in with Reed Love, Luke Lowry, Dave Lucroy. It's kind of a good good mesh of those older guys with the younger guys of, you know, Charlie Jorgen. You know, Travis was kind of an older guy, but because of his surgery the year before, he was still younger. So, I mean, he had Kirk Morgan, Bryce Harmon, all those guys. So, it was a good mesh of guys. So, it was kind of – we knew what we were, were trying to do and what we wanted to do. And so, it was, you know, kind of – better on that sense of things a little easier than just having to go out there and be looking for this, that, or the other, I should say. Hunter, uh, head coach O, Gary Overton on my radio show one day, and he he, he knows I, I like trivia. I host trivia every week, sports trivia, and he thought he could stump me. He said, who was the most outstanding player of the uh, AAC tournament? What year is that, Hunter? 2014? 2015. 2015. Yep, and – uh and I, I got it right. I said Hunter Allen. What do you remember about that uh, week, Hunter? Um, a little bit of luck. Uh, <laughs> had some balls off the off the end of the bat, off the off the handle, falling for hits. And I just remember us being out there and kind of, you know, we were really really clicking at that time. I think going into it, uh, we had won a few games in a row. Um, so I just I remember that, you know, being with the guys and and winning, of course, but you know, being able to enjoy, you know hey, we win, we get a day off. And so, you know, just being able to relax after after winning and getting a day off and then, you know, looking forward to the next day of kind of having something to prove where everybody thought that we were just kind of in a rebuilding year. But yeah. we as a team believed in each other and and Coach Cliff Goblin and Palumbo and Coach Roselle, uh, Pete Piscano, our ops guy, Coach Everett, they all, you know, made us believe in something bigger than just, you know, a rebuilding year. Um, which we didn't feel like that at all. We felt like probably the year before we didn't play as well as we should have as a team. And so, you know, going into the next year, the you know, just being able to continue and, and play to our potential, we felt like was, you know, that's what I remember the most was kind of that that part of it. And then, of course, the dog pile. You don't forget dog piles. Absolutely. Talking to Hunter Allen. Hunter, uh, talked to a couple of sources that told me a couple of different things about you. and. One of them is a writer uh, who covered the team then and still does, but he told me that you were – I don't know if seriously is the word, but you were banged up there at the uh, the end of the season, I guess towards the end of your career. How much pain were you playing through there? Yeah, I had a, had a little thumb injury. Um, give credit to, to Zach Womack for keeping me on the field on that side of things, and even Coach Galvin. I think we could probably benefit from being a smaller team because, you know, if we were where they are today, then I probably just wouldn't have got a chance. I'd have been hurt when I had got surgery and, and rolled out there. But, you know, Coach Godwin, Womack, uh, Coach Palumbo came up with 
you know, a program for me to to not take BP, to not do anything really but take ground balls and then just show up and play. You know, my first swings were in the game. So um, that part of it, you know, thumb injury, it, I just kind of got used to it type of thing, you know. I'd bang it up every now and then, but it was more so just being out there and I could play defense and I was good to go. The the offensive side of things came came second. Well, you kind of stole my thunder there. I had a source that was a coach, uh, Hunter, that told me he never worked out because he was an old man and always hurt. I, that, that's true. That's <laughs> true. It's funny. I You know, I was trying to think of a – a few coaches, but I mean, I feel like all of them could have said that. So that was the that was the running joke. I would I would take ground balls for the first um, anything we did defensively, I could do, and then during BP, I would take ground balls for that first session, and they'd kick me off so I didn't get hurt. And uh, I'd just go stand beside Dave Lucroy or whoever was hitting pungos and talk to them for the rest of BP. So it was kind of funny, but you know, I pick with Coach Godwin all the time. I you know I was playing with him. I my average got better when I stopped thinking about hitting and just, you know, showed up. So <laughs> being, being an overthinker, that has nothing to do with it. But, you know, it was kind of funny just how it worked out. Hunter, what, I, man, I've asked a lot of guys in your position this question. I want to get your take on it. What's it like being a baseball coach with no baseball season? How did you adjust? How, you know, how obviously it was different. How different was this year for you? Yeah, I think it's – tough all the way around, still trying to adjust, um, you know, trying to figure it all out, trying to figure out how we're, we're supposed to, you know, recruit in the dead period and, you know, keep guys interested in our program and, and that type of thing. So I think it's still a learning process. We're all trying to get through it together. Um, I know a lot of coaches, we all talk like, what are you guys doing? What's happening here? So, I mean, it's just that part of the recruiting side of things is, is tough right now. Um, but as far as the season, it's just unfortunate for our guys being in for the first year and getting to really see those guys play. You know, we work through a whole fall, and then they get to the spring, and, you know, it gets cut short and having a decent season and interested to see where you go from there, and it just gets cut short. So it's it's unfortunate, and it stinks, but, you know, everybody's in the same situation, and we're learning how to deal with it still to this day trying to figure it all out. And it's great that guys who had their senior seasons cut short or junior seasons, any season, uh, they're able to return and, and play baseball. How's that been for you at, at UNC Greensboro, bringing those guys back in and then figuring out the numbers with bringing new guys in? Because this is a process that is going to see itself out, you know, three, four years down the line, right? Yeah, so it, it definitely does continue over. Um, but I did think it was awesome to give the give the seniors and even – junior college kids, you know, coming in or needing to stay there because they didn't get recruited like they were supposed to, you know, giving them another year of eligibility I did think was awesome, you know, and then what they did with the rosters to make it a little more doable was definitely awesome. But, you know, also just trying to figure it out, figure out numbers for years to come is, you know, still one of those working processes where we're figuring it out and it's a, a day-to-day thing. So, you know, but kind of a, a learning curve all the way around for us, a little challenge. Hunter, we got uh, – I was able to watch some Little League baseball in Greenville uh, this past week. You got college summer league, uh, wood bat league going on, some travel baseball. Have you been able to get out to a field and watch any baseball since its return? I have not seen any baseball. So, a lot of the a lot of the fields up here are, you know, closed off. So, it's yeah. kind of funny you mentioned Greenville Little Leagues. I actually watched one of their games the other day because it was just baseball on it. I'm like, <laughs> I want to watch something. So, I cut it on. Um, some some Korean baseball league, yeah. watching some of that. So you know, just anytime there's baseball on, I've got to see a lot of old time classics. They like to replay those. So you know, just watching some baseball like that is all I've been able to do. And now that the CPL is back, just being able to to watch some of our guys kind of get out there and play a little bit has been has been neat. I'm glad to see that there is some baseball being played. It's promising. So. Hunter, uh, great to catch up with you, man. Hopefully we can talk to you again down the road about some actual results and preview some games. I can't I can't wait to see a box score. You know, I want to see some numbers, man. Yeah, no doubt, no doubt. But uh, thanks for joining us here, and, uh, and we wish you the best of luck, and we'll catch up with you again down the road, man. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yes, sir. There's Hunter Allen joining us inside the Pirate Radio Zoom Room, brought to you by the Auto Store Group, Sailor Warehouse, White Claw, Hard Seltzer, and your CBD store. We will see you next time.